Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Alejandro Perez, the CGI Nerd. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at lists in Python within Houdini. So, I'm going to open up the Python shell for right now. This is some old code that I was doing. Let's see, can I clear? Nope. Okay, it doesn't matter. Actually, let's do this instead. Let's create a new tool and we'll do the script in here. And we are going to start looking at list. This is day six of our learning Python in Houdini tutorial series. And here is our first example of creating a number or a list of numbers. In this case, we have a variable and we're setting it equal to this list. We know it's a list because it has brackets on the outside. And then we have elements within it. Each element is separated by a comma. Lists don't have to only be numbers. They can be strings. They could also be a list of mixed data types. So here we have an example of a list with a number, an integer number, then a string a floating point number, and then a list inside of a list. So you can put pretty much any data type inside of here. Okay, so let's work with numbers just because it's easy to kind of understand the concepts when we're working with numbers, but you can do this with any kind of data type when we are accessing the index. So let us go over here and we'll print numbers and let's open up the shell again window python shell Can I move that over move this here actually let's shrink this there we go okay so i'm going to apply this and right now if we print it we can see that we have the list that we created now what if we wanted to get access to only the first item in the list what we can do is set up brackets and we're going to put the number zero so let's apply this and run the tool and we can see we get the number one and why does that happen it's because each item inside of a list is assigned an index number. So the first item starts off at zero, then it progressively goes one, two, three, four. So if I wanted to access the next item, I can type in the number one, apply and run the code. Now I get two. Uh, let's say I wanted to get the last item in this case, which is going to be four. Oops. And let me do that again and apply and we can see that we get five so what if we didn't know how long the list was but we knew we wanted the last item well it gives us an option to actually use negative numbers for our indexing and a negative one starts with the last object and then it goes negative two negative three negative four and so on so if we apply this we can see that we get five now there are some built-in functions inside of lists that are pretty useful. One thing that is kind of nice that we can use is to be able to get the length of a list. So in this case, we're trying to get the list of this numbers list, the length of that number list. Let's apply that and run the tool. So we can see it gives us a five because there are five elements in here. So one, two, three, four, five. If there were more, you'd get more numbers. Then if you wanted the number that is the lowest, or if it was strings, it would be in kind of alphabetical order. We can use min numbers, apply and run the tool. We can see that we get the number one. If we do max, we can apply that and run it. We get the highest number, in this case, five. We can also add all of the numbers together. So in this case, we're using the sum function. I'm putting numbers in here inside of the parentheses. 
And if we apply that, we can see that we get a value of 15. So it's taking 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. We can also sort our list. Right now, the list is sorted by default. So if we apply this and run it, it looks the same. But let's say we had elements that were mixed up. This is 5 and this is 3. We can apply this and run it. And you can see it reorders it to be in numerical order. Now let's take a look at kind of adjusting things inside of the list in a slightly different way. There is, let's just print the numbers list here. So if we apply this and run it, you can see that we get the list the way we expect it. Now, let's say we wanted the list but in the reverse order. What we can do is run the numbers.reverse. So this command will actually reverse the order of our list. So let's apply this and run. And we can see that now it is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, instead of reversing, let's take a look at adding something to the list. Right now, we're going to add the number 6. So let's apply that. And when we print out numbers, we can see that it is one index longer. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a numerical number. We can actually do six there, apply, and run the tool. And we can see now, instead of the number six, we get the string value for six. We can also remove an element from our list. So here we got numbers.remove, and we're going to remove the number four. So if we apply this, and print out the list, we can see that we don't have the four in there. Something to be careful with this is that if we had multiple items that are the same value, and we do this and we try to run it again, it only removes the first instance of that value. So make sure that you take that into account if you're trying to remove every instance, you might have to approach it a slightly different way. Now let's look at using list practically inside of Houdini. So I'm going to start off by importing the Who module and let's create a geometry node here. And inside of here, let's create a null and we're going to create a few nulls here. Now let's say we want to get the selected object with our code. We can create a variable selected and it's going to be who.selectednodes. And then let's print selected. Okay, let's apply that. And right now I have null 3 selected. And you can see that it's when we print that, we get the sub node of type null at, and then it gives us the path. Now, if we had multiple items selected and we do this, we're going to apply and run the tool. You can see that we get multiple items there. So I'm going to go back and just have one selected. I didn't need to apply that, but okay. So we have this. Notice that we have it in parentheses. We don't have it inside of brackets. That's because it's a tuple. We cannot modify tuples, but it gives us to us in a tuple. So we can actually convert this to a list so that we can start working with it in the way that we have um, with list in the examples we had at the beginning of this video. So how do we do that? We can convert to a list. We have selected equals and then we have list and then inside of parentheses we put that tuple value with which selected and let's apply this and we have one node there selected and let's run the tool and you can see now it is surrounded by brackets. That means that we have a list that is based off of the tuple. We reassigned the variable to that list and now we can work with this list of items as and to do various different types of things. So. One thing that we can do that is pretty simple and it gives us an idea of how to set up 
using list, we can do this command here to set the input of a set of selected nodes. So I'm going to do selected at index level zero. So we're going to get the first item that is selected here. And then we're going to set the input. We're going to choose the first item, which is index level zero. If you had multiple inputs here, we go zero, one, two, three. Then we're going to connect it to selected at index level one. And then we're going to connect that to the first output. So again, if you had multiple outputs, it'd be zero, one, two. Now let's apply this and we need two items selected. So one, two, and let's run this. And you can see that it selects, sets the input of the first selected item to the second selected item. Now, if we disconnect this and we did it in the reverse order, let's select three, then two and run this. You can see that it connects it in the opposite order. Now, let us add one more line to this and we are going to get uh, another object. So the second selected object, we're going to set the input to the third selected object. So here we're going to go one, two, three. We'll do it in order so that way we can see the order it goes in. Apply and then let's do this and you can see it goes from one to two to three. And again, let's break the connections here. If you wanted to do the reverse of that, you just select them in the reverse order and run the tool. There we go. Push Y, cut the connections. And it doesn't have to be in a numeric order like that. We can go in any order that we want like that. Apply, and you can see that it connects them. And then if you wanted to, you can draw a box to make the selection. So how does it know when you're drawing a box in there? It's literally like as you go, you can see it highlights it. It's kind of the order in which you highlight it. So depending on how you draw your box and what item gets selected is the order in which it considers the item of the list. All right. So that's lists in Python in Houdini. I hope you found this useful. If you did, check out my other channel, TD Superheroes. It has a tutorial series that's learning Python right now, just like we are here, but it's in Maya instead of Houdini. So check out the video. Hope you guys found this useful. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.